Now you can raise a little hell with the help of a halogen. Here's a look at the McFarlane Toys Doom Classic Doom Slayer Glow in the Dark Edition. Since the beginning, the Doom Slayer has been a force to be reckoned with, unflinching in his mission to eradicate the demonic horde. In Doom Eternal, the Slayer is faster and deadlier than ever. Protected by his iconic armor and armed with a devastating arsenal of weapons and abilities, the Slayer is primed to wage the eternal war against Hell. Much like the figure, if you're hoping to see what you're fighting in the dark, it's best to shed some light on it. Just before we shed light on the glow-in-the-dark Doom Slayer, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide the sample we could have a look at. This gold label collection release of the Slayer is actually limited to 5,100 pieces worldwide. The figure is going to stand 7 inches in height, or the Slayer is about 17.5 centimeters tall. Now, this is the first time we've gotten the classic Doom Slayer mold. McFarlane, in fact, released this figure before as part of the Doom Eternal line. He would have still had for one of his included accessories the Super Shotgun we'll look at more in a moment, but he also would have had a circular display stand that we've seen countless times already with the DC Multiverse line printed with the Doom logo down below. He trades the smaller stand in favor of a much bigger rectangular stand instead. Still has the Doom logo, still has a peg that can plug into either one of his heels, but he has a much bigger footprint to work with when it comes to standing him on a shelf. Probably do that, though, when we get to the end of the review and final looks. The figure also comes included with a trading card that just happens to be standing right now in a placard. The little standee, as you can see, still has the Doom logo down below here. Let me just remove the card right now. We'll put it off to the side. I do like that they've actually used this image. Although, to be fair, I probably would have zoomed in a little bit more because there's so much just unused space up above. If they had only maybe cropped this just a little bit more so like the doom slayer was more front and center other than that though it's a nice looking trading card it does have glow in the dark edition featured down below there a reminder of course one of the fe finer features that this figure also has as well that the original figure would not have had now instead of actually having to read up on the back what we're treated to instead is a certificate of authenticity what's strange though is that out of the 5100 limited release this happens to be p5 but it also looks like it's been worn away I would normally have said that that was ink, but the way that it's been printed on actually looks like it's been pressed on. Speaking of pressing on, there's also as well the, the Todd McFarlane signature down below here as well. I always like to really display these along with the figure, so I'm glad to see that the Doom Slayer came included with one. As already mentioned, when it came to the Doom Eternal, the figure also came included with a super shotgun. The shotgun itself, I don't think is that much different from the original one. I don't happen to have the original Doom Slayer classic version I could bring in. But the super shotgun, it looks like it's molded about the same. Dark gunmetal gray with the additional blades down below here painted nicely here in gold. It does fit into his hands, although unfortunately though, by using an older figure, if you're familiar with like the older DC multiverse figures and some of the stuff that McFarlane was churning out way back in the day, then you're probably already used to seeing pegs like this. The way they attach the hands in order to have the hands swaying back and forth like this, what results in when you bring the hand far out like this, it leaves kind of this little peg sticking out in the middle of his hand like that. It's just, it's unfortunate though, that the way that the peg system works, that the peg has to be so far up, like the hinge joint has to be so far into his palm like this, that every time you move the hand out, we'll talk more about this in a moment. You can see like this little peg sticks out. That would be painful. That would be painful in a normal human. But what you can do, though, is that you can take the super shotgun and just wedge it into his hand. I will say, though, that the plastic that they're using hasn't changed at all. So if you're also as well familiar with like the older McFarlane releases, the plastic was unforgiving. Just get the hand kind of wedged around in there. The one benefit, though, at least is the way they've designed the hands is that he does have a trigger finger. So if you line everything up nicely, you can actually get that around the handle or around the section there where the trigger would be. And he holds it really good. Although it just, it's more of a struggle to get it into his hands. The plastic, again, is very, very hard on these figures. He also, as well, comes include the extended arm blade, which just happens to be on the other side of his arm here. Uh, nicely, again, sculpted. I don't think they've uh, at all changed it from the original release of the classic uh, Slayer. The thing also about it, too, is that if you don't like the idea of the blade always on the end of his arm like this, you can detach it. It just removes. There's a peg, actually, and there's a little hole right there. If you want to leave it off, you can leave it off. But then if you leave it off, you're going to have to find a place to put this. So for right now, at least, we're just going to plug it back in place. Um, one of the other things also that you probably have been noticing this whole time is the fact he also has a shoulder cannon. The cannon plugs in several different places. So there's a little peg on the back here that allows the neck to move back and forth this way. But then there's also an also arm here that moves with a, a peg. There's a peg right there. This also moves up and down. And there's also a ball joint at the top. So there's some decent movability. Movability, is that a word? It's some decent posability when it comes to the little shoulder cannon there. 
As for the rest of the figure, though, like I said, from a cosmetic standpoint, the only thing that's really been changed is the green in his, in his shirt. The rest of the coloring of his pants is just... Hold on a second as I get the, the gun out of his hands. The coloring of the plastic from at least like the waist down doesn't look that much different from the original one that we got from McFarlane's team. What's done differently, though, is now the additional welcoming green that if you happen just to have yourself a light source, just got myself my black light here, which I think, unfortunately, it's time coming time to probably change the batteries on this. I'm not going to shine it right in your face, but the uh, the light seems to be diminishing just a little bit. I'm just going to shine this across the front here in a, in a second as well. We're going to cut the uh, the lights around in the studio so you guys can see even better how this illuminates. I'm just going to shine it quickly, though, across the plastic here. It doesn't seem to illuminate anything really for the lower legs. So if you're kind of expecting some, some glow-in-the-dark feature down below, you're probably going to be a little bit more disappointed. But it does illuminate at least the shoulder cannon. It does also illuminate his shoulders and the front of his torso. And also as well, you can see it illuminates the front visor for his helmet. Like I said, we will be cutting the lights in a second, but I did want to show you guys the details on the figure itself. Classic looking Doom Slayer. I just love the way they've sculpted the head sculpt. You know, even though, again, like this is a slightly older figure from a mold standpoint, I think it still holds up rel relatively well. The paint they've done here for the, obviously the helmet itself, you've got these little indentations and markings that he's been in the war. I mean, this guy's been in battle lots of times. Just all these little scratches, little dents and stuff into his actual helmet just looks really good on the figure. Of course, he does have, again, like the brighter green here, which, again, really isn't all that jarring. I mean, if you wanted to pick this figure up for a, for a second as the stand-in for the Doom, Doom Eternal one that we got before, I don't think you're going to be looking at this and then thinking, oh, I really wish I had gotten the other figure and paid the crazy stupid money for. I mean, other than the colors being just slightly lighter of a green, it's a little bit more like a lime green jello color. I think the green still works well, even if you don't plan to shine a light on this all the time. Of course, his lower part of his body, we're just going to move his arms out of the way here. He does have the belt there on the front. A couple of little additional bullets that he can use if he happens to run out. It's a nice little pocket they've sculpted all the way on the sides. He only has really three on either side of his belt. Nicely sculpted as well, legs. He's a little on the shorter side, obviously, if you're looking at the proportions of him. Like, the top of his torso doesn't look so bad, but when you're looking at the lower half of it, it almost seems like as if his legs need to be a little bit longer than what they are right now. But you've got the little knee pads there on the front, some nice additional brown being painted down below here for his boots, and again, like, some neat, nicely sculpted treads even on the undersoles, even though, again, like, he has pickles on the bottoms of his feet. The only thing I would also say, too, is trying to attach him onto his display stand. I found almost as if the holes on his feet were too small that I really had to work a little bit harder to get the pegs actually wedged in there. Uh, of course, we'll, we'll look at the articulation. Should we look at the articulation or we look at the glow-in-the-dark feature first? Everybody's got their hands up for the glow-in-the-dark. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and cut the lights. You guys can see what this guy looks like in the dark. With a few moments in front of my studio lights, you may be able to see a little bit of glowing here on Doom Slayer. To help, though, assist that, I'm just going to bring back in my black light and shine it across the visor. Shine across his torso here so you can see how that illuminates. And while saying earlier, though, that the lower half of his body didn't actually glow... His trunks, as well as his boot guards, actually do illuminate in, in orange. The only thing, unfortunately, about this is you can already see they've used a different kind of plastic for his hinge joints, more specifically in his elbows and then down below in his wrists. Those things, unlike everything around it, actually glow in a different color. So unfortunately, if you're having this guy glow in the dark, things like his elbow joints, things like his wrist joints are going to stand out like a sore thumb, so to speak. Again, just shining this across the front of his visor. How much time you have this spent in front of a lamp will dictate just how much brighter this glows. It certainly does, Is in a case like this, it's going to glow a lot brighter in front of me. It may not glow as brightly in front of you guys, though, with the lights now turned on. Let's look at Doom Slayer's articulation. So even though this is a slightly older figure, he still retains some decent level of posability. Head's going to be on a ball joint, so it does rotate all the way around. The head looks down as well as up, and you can also move the head back and forth as well. It would technically be counted as well for posability. So there's a peg right here for the shoulder cannon. There's also as well that joint there that allows the neck to move back and forth. And there is, again, that posability in the ball joint where you can move the cannon back and forth as well. The upper torso is going to be on a ball joint. The lower mid-abdomen area is also going to be on a ball joint. You can take the arms and move them out. Now, the benefit of this figure, even though being an older mold, is that they still were smart enough to put the shoulder sections as part of his main torso. And when it comes to moving his arms, they aren't limited at all where you feel like the shoulder is kind of hindering what you can actually do with them. The only more limitations actually comes if you ever want to rotate the figure's arms all the way around, which I probably wouldn't advise that. For what little there is on plastic, that probably would shred and rip. So you may only want to just resort to moving the arms forward and back as that far. Uh, there is no swivel, surprisingly, there on the bicep. I was kind of thinking there was going to be a cut swivel right there, but there isn't. The figure does have a hinge in the elbow, super tight joints because it's one of those older molds. Hands rotate all the way around. But again, like you've got that unsightly peg. 
just by the nature of the way that this mold was designed. So swinging it out like this, you can see like there's this awkward piece of plastic that sticks right through his palm. It's got to be painful. Again, hands rotate all the way around. The legs do split. They're on ratcheted joints. You can take the legs and move forward, move them back. A swivel at the top of the thigh, double hinge on the knee. Actually, it's only a single hinge, which is surprising because I thought there would be a, a hinge right there as well. But there only is, in fact, a single hinge on the Doom Slayer. And then the articulation, of course, where it counts in the ankles back and forth this way and an ankle rocker there as well. One thing I really like about this figure is, again, even though it is using really the Doom, the Doom Eternal mold of Doom Slayer we got in before, if you didn't get the chance, I didn't get the chance, or me, I may have had the chance at one point, and then just unfortunately parted ways with him over the years. If you don't want to go back and start to track this guy down, the original one on eBay, and pay the crazy prices that go along with him. You know, honestly, if you can get your hands, though, on the Doom Slayer Glow in the Dark Edition, I don't feel like if you're looking at this figure, you would know right away that he's supposed to glow. Sometimes one of those telltale signs of a glow-in-the-dark figure is that the plastic color seems a little off. That You can look at it and you, and you say, there's something about this guy that does glow, doesn't it? I don't feel like that's going to be as much of the case here. Maybe the paint suffers just a little bit on the torso area because they're relying really less on the paint and more on the glow-in-the-dark feature. But I think for a stand-in Slayer, he does the job rather nicely. While I do feel that time has been kind on this particular mold of Doom Slayer, the only thing that the figure really suffers in is the lacking of articulation. With only just really a single hinge in his elbow and no swivability at all in his bicep. Is that a word? Swivability? While not having the options to swivel in his bicep does make the figure suffer a bit if you want to put him in any dynamic pose. He still stands out as a pretty decent looking classic Doom Slayer. I don't know if we will be getting any updated mold to what we're getting now in the Glow in the Dark release, but even if we don't, I think, again, this is a good-looking Doom Slayer to be putting on the shelf. Whether you get this one or you get the Doom Eternal version, I think it's still, either way, a nice mold from the folks over at McFarlane Toys. Have you guys had the chance to get yourself the Glow in the Dark edition or even backing it up a bit? Did you have also the original Doom Eternal version of Doom Slayer? Let me know what you guys think of the figure down below in the comment section. Big thank you once again to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide the sample of the Collector's Edition Doom Glow in the Dark Edition, which again is limited to only 5,100 pieces worldwide. If you guys did enjoy this video, I want to throw it a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and want to stick around for more McFarlane Toys reviews, well then, make sure you, first of all, you hit that subscribe button down below. Second of all, that you're turning on the bell notification. Third and most of all, that you're coming back here regularly. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.